some really cool scraps from those laser cut window boxes that I did recently and I was gonna burn these last night but I, I couldn't do it because they're so cool. So today I'm gonna put them to use and make a scrap wood epoxy resin serving board of some sort. Uh, let's go. I wanted to start by laying things out and roughly visualizing this to get a sense for what dimension felt right before I put together my mold. I'm using chipboard as the base of this mold. It's awesome for lightweight resin molds because it's easy to work with and it's flexible for unmolding. It does need to be coated in something, however, or the resin saturates it and it can start oozing out. Typically, I use Tyvek tape for this because resin doesn't stick to that, but I didn't have that on hand, so I went with painter's tape because I know resin doesn't soak through it. The sticky sides of painter's tape definitely don't stick to resin, but I've never directly tried resin on the other side of the painter's tape. So I wasn't really sure what to expect with this, but it's a scrap project, and you'll notice a running theme of experimenting for the sake of it throughout this. I'm working with the factory edge on the chipboard as much as possible as I'm putting this mold together because that will keep my finished mold nice and square without me really needing to try that hard. laser cut box joints are nice and perfect so I use them as a reference edge to then cut the live edge from each of these long and narrow scraps. I want to fill each of these rectangular gaps with resin but I need it not to ooze out and make a mess on me. My plan of attack was to clamp these two nice and straight strips together and then use the sticky side of a strip of painters tape to firmly press onto the back side of the wood and then I can pour the resin in. I'm using Total Boat 2 to 1 Epoxy because it has a bit of a thicker consistency, so it's less likely to leak. It also hardens relatively quickly, which I like. This pour worked out perfectly for me. I love this painter's tape trick. I measured my strip against the mold and cut it down to fit, and then positioned the round scraps how I liked them. This is gonna be a trickier resin pour because I wanna avoid leaks and there's much less wood that I'm working with this time to create a barrier. I colored this section with just a little bit of aqua pigment. And then a little tip here is that I pre-portioned equal amounts of pigment into three cups ahead of time because I thought this might leak and I wanted to be able to create more resin with an identical saturation of color down the road if I needed to. And spoiler alert, it did leak down the road, so I'm actually really glad that I thought to do this on the front end. And this particular pour made a mess. <laughs> You know, I can clean it up, it'll be fine. Um, but I do think I have a more elegant, better way to accomplish a similar thing that I'm gonna show you right now. And this is gonna be for like the other half of the board. I'm gonna use a different technique on the other half to see how that works. While the tight bond quick and thick set, I focused on cleaning up the resin spill. To do this, I heated the resin with a torch. This will soften it up a bit and then it gets pretty easy to slowly scrape away with a knife like this. And by the time I had this first piece cleaned off, the glue was dry on the other side and I could go ahead and get the resin into this one. 
good news, it worked out perfectly. And this particular glue dries clear, so it looked more or less identical too. From here, I got my two pieces positioned in the mold. To keep these from floating in the large resin pour, I secured them down with just a bit of painter's tape. I figured this would be good enough. I wanted this middle section to have a kind of subtle flush of color, so I regularly would have gone with alcohol ink for this. But this was a day for experimenting, so I went ahead and used a drop of acrylic paint to see what I got. It worked out pretty darn well. Just look at that blue color I got. Um, but I actually wanted this to be a bit more purpley, so I added a drop in of some warm red paint, and this is the finished result. Another important detail is that I'm doing this in two quarter inch pours because of the particular type of epoxy I'm using. The Total Boat 2 to 1 medium hardener can only handle a quarter inch pour at a time or it starts bubbling and causing problems. Once it hardened up, I finally got to see how this mold strategy worked out and it fully adhered. <laughs> but it perfectly showcases why chipboard is great for mold making. This is, the, this is this is a bad technique. I don't really know how else to put it. Don't do it this way. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty. It worked. So maybe it's not a bad technique, but like, don't do it this way. A drum sander is the way to go with anything involving resin and I guess painter's tape in this case, uh, because you can change the belts out easily when they inevitably get gummed up. I'm drum sanding this with a 60 grit until I have a smooth pass on both sides. And then I always also finish off with a pass or two using a 220 grit belt because it makes the final sanding process go a lot more quickly. I knew that this was going to end up pretty thin because I was starting with wood that was already a half inch thick and you inevitably lose some thickness with this process. I actually ended up liking how sort of thin this ended up. I thought it was kind of cool. Now is time to get this nice square. I measured a straight edge off of the box joints within the design on the board and then eyeballed this first cut on the table saw. I could then use this one flat edge as a reference edge to work my way around the board and get a nice even rectangle. And then we have tile floors and a little trick that I use all the time is lining square things up with the floor tiles to make sure it's perfect. I find it way easier to visualize than using like a machine a square or something. I like it. I think it needs a chamfer or a round over. Hmm, chamfer. With the chamfer on there, I did a final sand at a 220 grit and then thoroughly wiped off all the resin dust with water to prep this to be finished. These finishing cones are 3D printed. If you want to print them yourselves, you can download the files to do that through the virtual makerspace at makersworkshop.com. Go check it out. They're cheap and effective. Can't beat that. And I'm using Bumble Shoots finish on this. These products are made in New Hampshire, which I love for this piece because the wood is from Concord, Massachusetts. The resin is from Rhode Island. And uh, yeah, I love New England. We're from the Boston area, if you didn't know that. Quick PSA. Do not chop on top of resin cutting boards. They are perfectly suitable, however, to serve food on top of once the resin is cured. Charcuterie! Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you.
I have a question. Why? Do you actually call this charcuterie? No. Snacks. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I would call this a cheese board. You'd say snacks? Regular basis? Yep. You just would have this? Yep. Okay. Mm. Alright, roll your finish shot. <laughs> mm. <laughs>